Before we start on the sign, let's we're going to give it just a really straightforward way to write it. Okay, so here's all of our shifts, shifts, stretches, stretches, shrinks, shrinks, etc., etc. For y equals sine of x, y equals sine of x. My stylus is giving me some troubles today. Sorry about that. So here's the form: f of x equals a sine of bx plus c plus d. Now, your author chooses to use a's and omegas and phi's and all kinds of garbage. Def fooey. It's not what we're doing. Okay. So let's go back. Let me grab that function that we, that we played with over here. This guy right here. We're going to put this in. All right. We're going to put y equals negative 3 sine of 2x minus 1 half. Or, I'm sorry, 2x minus pi halves plus 3. So f of x, so let's do y equals negative 3 sine of, was it 2x minus pi halves, wasn't it? Plus 3. But we're going to play with this guy first. First things first is we need to talk about something called the amplitude. All right, so let's take a sine function. So a, or the absolute value of it, is equal to the amplitude. Okay? And the amplitude is simply the distance from the middle of the function, from the middle of the sine function, to its peak. Or we could think about it similarly as the distance. It's got an absolute value, so it's a distance. From the middle down to its trough. Another way to think about the amplitude is to take the low value plus the high value, high value, and do what with it? I mean, think about that. Just divide it by 2 right? Low plus, or I'm, what did I do? I'm sorry. <laughs> the absolute, where did I get plus from? Sorry. The absolute value of low minus high, because we know with sine, if that were the case, it'd be negative one plus one, which is zero. Sorry about that, you guys. My head's in the clouds just for a second there. So low minus the high value, the absolute value of that, because we want a distance, and divide it by two. Okay? Now, here's the problem. Here's the absolute trickiest thing. Amplitude's piece of cake. That's always like the first step that you're going to want to play with. Now let's think about what we would do to this function before we did anything else. And hopefully you remember this from your Algebra 2 days. The first thing that I would do is I would take f of x equals a sine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the b. So I'm going to be left with b times x plus c over b. Now why is this important? It's real simple. This, what we just did here, allows us to not only do the amplitude, which is a piece of cake, but now remember what this term did over here. It stretched or it shrunk our mother graph. Well, the way that that plays out in terms of sines and cosines is it affects our period. So for part two, I'm going to take, I, I simply figure out what the period is. And the period's always a piece of cake. I take the original period of sine. So this guy right here is the original, the original period, period. And I'm going to divide it by b after it's been factored. So let's write that in red so everybody sees that. This guy right here is going to be factor first, factor first. In other words, get this b term out. And we'll do that with this function here in a sec on the other page, of course. Okay, so let me go back to my black pen, and here we go. So I got my period. Now, look what happens here. Once I've got it in this form right here, once I've dealt with the B, well, isn't that back to these types of problems, right? It's, that, that, it's just back to those problems. So what we refer to those as in the sinusoidal case is called a phase shift. Phase shift, and that just means a left or a right shift, okay? And the thing to remember is, we just go, it's going to be negative c over b. If c over b is positive, remember x plus c over b and c and b are both positive, then it's going to move left, right? If it's negative, then it's going to move right. And we got to, we got to keep track of that. And then the last one's a piece of cake. Let's go 4. Well, what is that? It's just a vertical shift. Vertical shift of whatever d is. If it's positive, if d is greater than zero, 
it shifts up. If D is less than zero, then it shifts down. Hey, that's good times, huh? So let's let's do this guy, right? Real quick. Let's let's see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna sketch the whole thing, but I'm gonna keep them, I'm gonna do a quick little sketch of the mother graph first. All right, just to kind of have that in my brain. So y equals, I think I've had an f of x, but y equals f of x, so my bases are clear. Sine of 2x plus pi halves plus 3. Pi halves, that's a 2, by the way, plus 3. Let's see what it looks like. So first things first. I remember when I taught algebra 2, I would always start the kid, I'd make the kids draw the mother graph first. All right, so what's going to happen to this thing? Well, it's going to go, I'm going to call this 1, and I'm going to call this negative 1, and I'm going to call, again, I'm just, I'm just eyeballing these. This is going to be pi 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is going to be 2 pi, and I know badly drawn that this thing's going to go whoop, 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 just like that. And I know, I mean, if I absolutely had to, I could label, label some points, and we'll talk about how many points you need to label in class. This is pi halves, comma, 1, and this is 3 pi halves, comma, negative 1. So that's a relatively pretty function, and I know it goes back and does its thing over here, and it goes up in, into infinity and does its thing over there. So let's play with this thing. We're going to change the color. Let's play with this thing. So let's grab the free piece of information first. What is absolute A? Well, it's the absolute value of negative 3, right, which is 3. That's a free piece of information. Ooh, remember back here I said to factor first before you start playing around with ideas of period phase shift and vertical shift. Well, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to kill a couple birds with one stone. I'm going to keep the, the color of my pen the same so you can see that I sort of did this as an, after, as an afterthought. It's going to be negative 3 times the sine of. Now, you ready? I'm going to factor out the 2, and it's going to give me x plus pi fourths, right? And then plus 3 down here. All right? This is awesome. So, so let's see what happens. I've got my amplitude first. Two. Let's find the period. Well, the period is equal to what? Well, what's the original period of sine? It's 2 pi. And then I divide by that coefficient of the x plus b over c term. And the coefficient in this case happens to be 2. My 2's cancel, and guess what? I have a period of pi. How about 3? What's my phase shift? Sometimes you see this written as ps, which is not postscript, but phase shift. So let's go phase shift is equal to what? It's going to be that we use this piece of information right here. That tells me that it moves left pi fourths, right? It moves left, it moves opposite its sign. So it moves left pi fourths, and then last but not least, or what does this guy tell me? Plus three. That tells me it moves, I've got a vertical shift, vertical shift, sometimes you'll see this is Vs, but I don't really do that, of up three. Okay, so let's think about what's going to happen here. Let, we're, we're just going to kind of putts with this thing. First things first, I know that the amplitude of this thing is going to be 3. However, I've got a negative 3 out in front. So think about what that's going to do. It's going to make, instead of going up to pi halves comma 1, it's going to go down first. So I'm going to, this one's going to be a real rough sketch, and then we'll play with everything as we need to, okay? So I know its whole period is in pi. I know its amplitude is 3. I'm not going to deal with this, the, the phase shift or the vertical shifts yet. I'm just going to get my brain wrapped around what this thing looks like with the period and the amplitude being tweaked. So it goes down to negative 3, up to positive 3, and it does the whole thing in pi. So let's mess with that for just a sec. If that's true, before we apply either the phase shift or the vertical shift, then do you agree this is going to be pi halves comma 0? Hopefully you do. This one's going to be what? What are these going to be? Oh, this is going to be what? Pi fourths, because it's half of pi halves, comma negative 3. And then up here is going to be pi, 3 pi fourths, or 3 quarters of pi, comma positive 3. You see that? Now, that's kind of cool, because now I can start getting my brain wrapped around how to shift this thing. Because I'm going to have to shift it left pi fourths, and I'm going to have to shift it up 3. Okay, so let's do that. And this, I know that this almost feels um, torturous, but it's, it's a great process to go through. Let's do it with this color. 
All right, so if I move this guy over, so this point right here, 0, 0, is going to be moved over pi fourths, and it's going to be moved up 3, right? So what does that tell me? Well, it tells me I actually like to do... I'm going to make this thing, let's go, 1, 2, 3, wait, 1, 2, 3, and then I'm going to put pi right here, all right? Because that'll, trust me, it'll make me happier. So this is going to be pi fourths. This one's going to be negative pi fourths. My, my vertical scale and my horizontal scale are not going to be the same, but that's okay. This is pi halves, and this is 3 pi fourths. So it'll still be a great way for us to sort of get our brain wrapped around this, okay? And then what I'm going to do is, now i got to move this point over pi fourths, so to the left pi fourths, and then up 3. Now, we got to be a little careful here because I'm going to have to go up three more from that. So you, I'm kind of going to be in my own way here, but I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go up one, two, three, and I'm going to name this point. And this point is going to be negative pi fourths, comma, three. Why? Because I had to move it left pi fourths and up three. The up three from, comes from that part, not this part. Remember, that just had to do with the amplitude. Now, this point, pi fourths negative three, has to be moved to the left, pi fourths, and up three. Well, if I move over pi fourths and up three, guess where I end up? I end up at zero, zero. Let's name it. So this is going to be, ooh, I need some room, zero, zero. I'm going to end up drawing it right through the middle of my stuff, but that's okay. Now, this point right here is pi halves comma zero, and I'm going to move that over pi fourths, which will get me to pi fourths, right? If I move this over pi fourths, and then up three. So I was at pi halves comma zero, I'm moving over pi fourths and up three. So this point right here is pi fourths comma three. And then last but not least, I started this value, right, well, I guess I got two more to do, don't I? Right? So um, let's have a look, see, oh, three pi fourths, which I gotta move over pi fourths. And it was at three, wasn't it? So now I gotta move it up to six. So I'm going to move to the left, I'm going to move to the left, pi fourths, and up three. I know I keep saying that, but that's kind of a good mantra to be able to do. So I started at three pi fourths comma three. I'm going to move left pi fourths and up one, two, three, whoops, up one, two, three. And then this point, I need to erase that other little parenthesis there, don't I? I'm kind of in my own way. So four pi fourths, boo. So I move over pi fourths and up one up one, two, three, and this is going to be pi halves comma six. And then what happens? Well, I've got this point right here, which used to be pi comma zero, right? But I'm gonna move it over pi fours and up three, right? So I start at pi comma zero, I move over pi fours and up one, two, three. And look at what I have. I have this new function. Now. Of course, this thing goes on forever, right? I know that this thing is going to do this, but I'm really only worried about kind of what happens locally. Now, what's the difference between this function and the mother graph? Well, that's not a bad thing to do. Let's see, one, two, wait, two, four, six, eight. Sorry, you guys. This is two pi. What would they look like? Well, we know that the original sign goes halfway right there, looks Again, this thing squashed down because I had to. It looks like that. But what did I do? I squished it up this way and wrinkled it, right? And then I moved it to the left, and then I moved it up, and then I stretched it by a factor of three. I also flipped it, didn't I, because this sign was negative. Now, don't take my word for it. Let's actually look at it on the calculator. 